Okay, let's talk about how you go about solving this one and make a partial key. So here we have a case where you're talking about energy and see a temperature change. So you know that is Q equals MC delta T, where Q is the energy and mass is given right there. C is going to be needed and delta T you can get it from right here. Now, how do I know you're going to need C? It's because it asks, what is the metal? It gives you mass, energy, and temperature. It asks, what's the metal? The idea here is that C, the specific heat capacity, is different for each metal. So if you figure out what C is, yes, find C, you can then match C to this list and figure out which metal it is. So that means we need to get C by itself. We need to rearrange this equation algebraically. Where we're, we're going to do that is we got to do something to both sides. And since C is times all this stuff and we want to get it all out of there, we're going to divide by the stuff that is in C. So divide by M delta T. And remember to do it to both sides. In algebra, the way it works, if you want to divide something away, you got to do it to both sides of the equation. So M cancels M, delta T cancels delta T, leaving just C by itself, and leaving the new version of the equation being Q over M delta T equals C. Now we can find what C is, and once you find C, we can match the list and identify the metal. So we got Q, we got M, and we got delta T. We need to find delta T. So delta T equals, and well, it is final temperature minus initial temperature, but I tell people don't worry about that because they get confused and subtract the wrong ones. Just consider this. Changes temperature from 21 to 36. So we should understand that when you're changing from 21 to 36, you start at 21 and end at 36. You end 15 degrees higher than what you started at. So if the temperature goes up 15 degrees, make sure you get a positive delta T. So let's subtract the big one from the small one to just make sure that we have a positive number. So 36 degrees Celsius minus 21 degrees Celsius equals positive 15 degrees Celsius because the temperature went up. So let's plug the numbers in. When something requires something, that means positive Q because it's absorbed. If we said released, you would have put a negative sign on there because it requires, it absorbs, and is therefore positive Q. So Q is positive 10.1 joules. Mass is 2.8 grams. And t change in temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. So joule per gram degree Celsius actually is the units of specific heat capacity anyway. So yay, our units cancel out correctly. And now we do the actual math. 10.1 divided by 2.8 times 15 close parentheses. You need those parentheses, by the way. Without those, you're going to get a wrong answer. Um, okay. 0.2404 joule per gram degree Celsius. Ignore sig figs for temperature, but this is two and this is three sig figs, so round to two sig figs. So that would be a 0 0.24 joule per gram degree Celsius, rounded to two sig figs because of this. Now, what is the metal? We look at this and then match it to, oh look, same number for silver. Now, I'm actually gonna box both of those, the rounded answer and silver, because even though it didn't ask for the rounded answer, anyone can just spit this out without needing to know anything, but you need to show where you got it from. So this becomes the major supporting work that makes this answer possible, so that's why I box this too. All right, let's move along. Now this works a similar kind of way, so if you can do this, you can do this. Let me scoot this underneath the support so I can then work on the next one. This one. Mass of pure aluminum will release, okay, you got joules and change in temperature. So you know once again using Q equals MC delta T. So where's our Q? It's right here, and moreover, when it says release, that means negative. So that means Q equals negative 273 joules. And then mass, it's asking for mass. So that's our question mark, because we're solving for it. Specific key capacity, back to that in a sec. And then delta T, well, you can get that from right here, delta T. Now, what about specific heat capacity? Answer is you can find it right here. Every substance has its own unique specific heat capacity so or so we assume so aluminum you can get its specific heat capacity from this chart right here it's the where is it 
0.89 joules per gram degree Celsius. So let's set that. So C equals 0 0.89 joule per gram degree Celsius. Remember, every single number should always have units attached. Let's find the delta T while we're at it. Delta T, temperature drops, which means delta T is negative. That's terribly unreadable, but you get the idea. Delta T is negative. Um, so we're going to make this negative. So the way you make it negative is you have the smaller number of 25 degrees Celsius. Subtract the bigger number out of it. And it's going to give you 25 minus 153, negative 128 degrees. That's our delta T. It's negative because the temperature dropped. Okay, we've got what we need. We have Q, negative 273 joules. Mass is what we're looking for. Specific capacity is right there. Delta T is right here, but we do need to get mass by itself. This will not give us the answer to mass. This will give us um, Q, which we already have. So we need to find mass. And the way we do that is we divide both sides by all the stuff that isn't mass because we need that variable M by itself. So I've got to do it to both sides. I'm going to divide by C delta T on both sides. So that C cancels C and delta T cancels delta T, leaving Q over C delta T equals mass, like this. So we plug in the numbers now. Q is negative 273 joules. And on the bottom, C is 0 0.89 joule per gram degree Celsius. And then um, on the other part of that right here, the delta T, that's the negative 128. So it turns out this will cancel this, this will cancel this. Bottom of the fraction flipped upside down will give grams as its unit. So actually this will cancel to give grams properly. And when you do the actual math itself, you get two, oops, 273 joules divided by in parentheses. Yes, don't forget that parentheses or else you're going to get this wrong. 0.89 times one, 128. Now, uh, let me point something out. I just realized as I did that. I got a positive number, and you'll notice I left off the negative signs. One shouldn't necessarily always do that, but here's the way I did. I took a mental shortcut that I didn't properly explain. Um, negative 273 divided by 0.89 times negative 128 gives the exact same answer you saw before because you have a negative answer here, and this will make a negative answer on the bottom. So negative divided by negative makes a, makes a positive. So it comes out to this. And I took that mental shortcut, I just hadn't bothered to show it. But if you plug in the negatives, you get the same thing. That said, if only one was negative, then you'd have a negative answer. But if both are negative, then you'd have a positive answer. Um, you'll never have all three negative because it's impossible to have a negative specific heat capacity. All right, now, anyway, 2.39641.8539 grams. All right, so that's what that one is. Now I'm just double checking to make sure I got all my math right. Okay, yes indeed. So um, the next thing to look at is, okay, this is the mass in grams, but we got around for significant figures. Ignore sig figs for temperature, but do look at the other things. So this is two sig figs, this is three, so we better round to two. And this will be 2.4 grams of aluminum. That's the mass of aluminum that will release that many joules when its temperature drops from this to this. All right, so that being what it is, let's look at uh, one final example from this worksheet and let's look at what happens with this. A sample of magnesium burned inside a calorimeter. The calorimeter contains that many grams of water and the reaction caused the temperature to rise from that to that. Calculate Q for the reaction. Okay, so we need to find Q for the magnesium, but the problem is, first of all, uh, magnesium is not on our list. And second of all, we don't know the specific heat capacity of magnesium. Third of all, um, we don't know the temperature of the magnesium because this is the mass of the water, not the magnesium. This is the temperature of the water, not the magnesium. So we're going to make an assumption. So if we had a container of water and the magnesium is inside and it burns, it's going to release energy when it burns and that energy is going to go into the water. So Q of the reaction which means the magnesium burning, is equal to Q of the water. As in, like, 
every joule released by magnesium is absorbed by water. So if the magnesium loses 20 joules, the water gains 20 joules. The magnesium loses 2,140 joules, the water gains 2,140 joules, etc. The only thing that we need to mention is if the magnesium loses energy, it, the water gains it. If the magnesium gains energy, it gets it by sucking it out of the water. So it's got to be opposite. So whatever Q of the reaction is, it's the opposite of Q of the water. So we're going to find Q of the water and then have it be the opposite for the reaction. So let's do Q for the water. Q equals MC delta T. Why? Because Q equals the, well, Q is the energy for the water. M is the mass of the water. We have it. C is the specific heat capacity of water. We have it on the list. And then the delta T is the change in temperature of the water, which we have right there. So let's look at that. What's delta T of the water? Delta T for water is the temperature rho, so we better make it positive. So we're going to take the bigger number, subtract to the smaller one. 29.9 degrees Celsius minus 20.3 degrees Celsius equals... 29.9 minus 20.3 equals 9.6 degrees Celsius. And it's a positive 9.6, just to emphasize. So anyway, uh, what are we at? Q for the water equals mass of 1,912 grams times specific heat capacity of 4.184 joule per gram degree Celsius, which as a reminder, that came from the list. And then uh, this... Next thing, the delta T is up there, times 9.6 degrees Celsius. So degrees Celsius cancels degrees Celsius, gram cancels gram, to leave joule is the answer. Hooray, that's good. And we get 1912 times 4.184 times 9.6 to make that 7679.8.1568 joules. And then we round for sig figs. So ignore that because ignore temperature, but that's four sig figs and not that is also four sig figs. So one, two, three, four, we got to round right here. This is where we round. So uh, this is going to be interesting because then it's going to be seven, six, seven, nine becomes seven, six, eight, zero. It's a little easier to see if we do scientific notation. So let me do scientific notation for this one. 7.6. Seven nine eight one five six eight times ten to the fourth joules. Yes, that's right. It's times ten to the fourth. See, so uh, let's now understand. We got a round right here, so that becomes seven point six, and then this nine is next to an eight, so it rounds up, which forces the seven to also round up. So it's almost like seventy nine rounds up to eighty. And that's units of, oops, almost forgot the scientific notation. And let me make that a little clearer in here too. So 7.680 times 10 to the fourth joules. And now here's the thing. The answer is positive for water. Because the temperature went up, therefore the water gained joules. However, we need to understand if the water's, whatever the water is, Q of the reaction is opposite. Or we can say Q of the reaction is the opposite of what water is. So if water is negative, Q of the reaction is positive. If water is positive, Q of the reaction is negative. So Q is equal to the same one, but negative because this one's positive. So 7.680 times 10 to the fourth joules for the reaction. And that is a very important distinction. All right, there's that.